Hello and welcome. My name is Ajax Post, and you join me here in Car Mechanic Simulator 2021. Just as I'm just sort of going through my little sort of bits and bobs bench here, checking out all my tools are back in the right slots, and I've got all my nuts and bolts properly categorised in their right little buckets. Yes, um, a good garage does need to be properly organised. Although, yeah, are, are we sweeping rubbish under the desks now? I'm going to have to have a word with my junior staff, I think. And that towel could do with a jolly good wash. Yeah, we've got a first aid bag. That's always very handy. And yeah, so here we are. Welcome. Uh, we've moved on a, a, a few days, I think, really. I've, I've gained experience and, more importantly, credits. So I'm now at level 31. I've done a fair number of jobs since you were last with me. Which means if we look at my workshop... Uh, toolbox here. Yeah, I've got pretty much all the skills. I've got 11 skill points still to spend. So I could spend, oh, I could spend them all on these two options here. It occurred to me, actually, just as I was starting this recording, because the, there's loads more levels you can go up to, I don't know if there's an upper limit on this, but I am still collecting XP. So presumably I will go up to a level because it says that, yeah, I need 2,025 XP to go up something or other, presumably to level 32. Um, anyway, yeah, so, so I was wondering, actually, when I get more... Do I get more skill points as I go up? What do I do with them? Or is this the last 11 skill points I will ever get? I don't know. But let's get this... Uh, this moving faster one, anyway. And we'll see what happens. I won't spend that last one, because I, I think I moved fast enough already, to be fair. And in terms of all the tools and expansions, I now have everything, including all the test paths that we looked at before, the salvage shed, we which we've got in the last episode. I've got all the painting options, and I now have the dino room. Which is why we're here today with this uh, very smart-looking car. This is actually a story car. It's uh, number 13 in the sequence, and again, there's loads, I, 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 30 plus or something, there is a large number of story cars, if you want to go through them. I've left this one here, because it was the first one, I think, that introduces the tuning, the performance parts that you add to the engine. And as we can see here, and this is why I've stopped at this point, I've done everything, so there's a fair amount of fixing to do, and the other tasks... Uh, more fluid changing and increasing the tuning of a car by 10 to 15 percent so what i did is i went to my shop i went to the tune-up and i got lots of these parts oh these blue ones are new uh, i think just yesterday uh, as of the time of recording this episode uh, release 1.0.9 was released onto steam and that adds a whole new set of tuned braking options or tuned brake options um, I'm not quite sure why they're coloured blue. Maybe it's just because that's brakes. Um, brakes are blue. As opposed to red for everything else you put in the engine. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if there's any other sort of distinction or differentiation that that colour signifies, apart from the fact they're new and they be brakes. Yeah, so what I did was I, I got a fair number of um, these performance parts and put them into this engine and rebuilt it and put it in the car and it said no you have not satisfied my request and I thought I have really I have I put all those performance parts in what are you talking about man and then I discovered what was going on which I'll come to in a moment but first off again a little bit of section to sort of lead us into the main bulk of the episode of things I've learnt so again if you're new to the game you may find this useful tips or information that, that you weren't necessarily aware of beforehand. So these are the performance parts. Now when that order said I wanted performance increase by 10 to 15 percent, what you're doing there is you're adding up the performance improvement given by each of these components. So for example the carburetor C here gives me a 5 percent performance improvement. So two of those and, uh, well, if I put all four of these car... Actually, no, if I put that one on, uh, the carburetor V8F, and this V8E, and this V8 OHVE, carburetor C, those are 5% each, so that would add up to 15%. Job done. But obviously, I didn't do quite that. Yep, so the other thing, this is one thing I wanted to test out for myself, is that all the smaller components, they all actually add up. 
So what did I put in here? I put the pistons in. I put four pistons in here, I think it was. So where the heck are pistons? Oh, here they are, yeah. So they're 1.13. And each piston is a 1.13. So four of those is 4.5-ish, uh, whatever. I can't do maths in my head. Not when I'm talking as, at the same time as well. Yeah, multitasking is not a skill I particularly possess. Anyway, so I put all those in. And I've worked out, yeah, all the numbers add up. And that should hit the requirement of the customer. And I thought, well, why the heck have I not hit that? And what I discovered by sending the car to the Dino Lab. Is that what it's actually called? No, 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 don't do that. There you go. Go there, move it to the Dino. We will see what happens. So we'll come here and we'll get, where's our, oh, you know, it's this the big screen at the front. It's one of those big touch screens, isn't it? Or do you just stand in front of it and, and wave at it? Motion sensor. Yes, so let's accept this. So this is what the Dino Lab does. It just measures the performance improvement or degradation you've added to your car. Oh, I, to, I keep forgetting this. You need to press enter to start it. <laughs> there it goes, roaring into life. And someone's pressing the throttle down. Might be me, I don't know. It could be my, my associate, one of my workers, revving up, and up, and away we go. That's the job done. And there you see, so this, this reports now, I've increased tuning, I've improved performance by 20%. 20, that's him. That's I'm I'm happy with that. But unfortunately, as it shows you here, that is a red X. I have not met the customer's requirement. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to re remove five percent or so of the performance improvement I've added to this car. And I just happen to know this is why it's a good thing because I made notes of keeping notes of all the parts you add in in case you need to take things out or adjust things. So I know I added in a performance engine head which gives me, I think, 5%. And the question is, is that going to be enough? Or have I got a point, a decimal point percent? Uh, oh, what am I going to have to get out? Oh, bother. Actually, the camshaft, that was one thing. That gave me 2.7%. You see, there's a performance improvement there. And that was 1.25. I don't want to spend too much time getting this out. Uh, oh, did I improve anything down here as well? The alternator, oh that's, I could take these out. These might be simpler than taking the engine head off. Okay, let's, let's go with this then. Hopefully this is the job done, and the cover can go back on. So have I... No! <laughs> oh, bother! Um, right, I need something else to take out then. Uh, oh, this is... How annoying is that? Right, I'm going to have to start taking this engine apart a little bit more than I anticipated. And I'll rejoin you. It'll probably just take the camshaft out, to be honest, which means I've got to take all these belts and stuff off. Right, and I'll rejoin you once I've got all that job done. And there it is. Everything appears to be done now. So I have managed to reduce the, reduce the performance improvement down to 15% or less. There, let's go to the Dino Lab, our final check, and we'll hand this back to our, to our customer and hopefully earn a fair amount of money. There we go, pretty much bang in the middle of the required range, 12.65%. Yeah, we're very happy with that. It's lovely, so how much am I gonna earn from this job? 14 grand, that'd be nice. I have been spending a bit in those barns and junkyards to be honest, so that will come in very handy indeed. 
excellent result. Okay, back to the front of the garage to numpty the car fixers, fixers forecourt. Dun, dun, dun. Another Volvo! Yes, we are a Volvo garage after all. Uh, kind of. <laughs> it's our speciality. I've also picked up a new mod. This is uh, the Plymouth Fury, is it? I think Plymouth Fury is a, is a mod of the infamous Christine. If you would like to see me restore this vehicle, which I think was a junkyard find, then uh, do let me know in the comments below, and we will do that, I think, as the next episode. There's, uh, there's quite a bit to do on this one. Actually, it's not. No. No, actually, it's not. There's only a few bits to do, so that'd be quite a quick task, but we don't want to do that one today. We've already done a Volvo, but I got another one in anyway, which was a customer order to do. Yeah, oh, there's quite a lot in these doing on this one. All the gearbox faults. I'm getting quite good at this, actually. I, I, now, I think the main thing I, I got was the test path. So I think that is one of the, apart from the repair table, uh, are you, one of the next things I think would recommend getting is the test path. It really does help uh, diagnosing things like brakes and suspension. Well, that's what it's designed to do, <laughs> diagnosing brakes and suspension. It is quite handy. And this is a lovely little racer. It's one of the base cars, uh, DC Typhoon. Uh, again, not a lot to be done on this, but could be fun. However, what we will do, I think, for our next job is another one of my junkyard finds. So let's have a look at what we've got parked up in our alley. We've got the Spectre Fastback, we've got another Volvo, and I've also picked up two DeLoreans now. Uh, actually, I really like the look of the Zephyr. I think we saw this last time. Let's go to the... Let's go to the alley, shall we? Here we are. I, I like the Zephyr because it just looks so much like a proper, traditional, old-fashioned. Uh, show the show the car. Bring it out. Open the door. I have to press enter on that, do I? Yeah, this, there are still some very odd key combinations and requirements here. Some you can do on the mouse. Some you can do on the enter, escape. Uh, there are people complaining a fair amount about the key mapping in this game. Particularly for left-handers, I think it is uh, an issue. And they could help a lot by adding some proper dynamic key binding in. Uh, yeah, so we'll do that one at some point. I may do that one off camera. We'll see how that turns out. But I've also now got two DeLoreans. And the trouble is the De DeLoreans are expensive. So I did lose a fair amount of money. Are you coming out? Thank you. You do spend quite a lot of money picking these things up. Unfortunately, this is, this is a time machine version. Ooh, I'd have to do that up properly. Uh, car preview. Yeah, there's not a lot to it. And unfortunately, you can't see here in the alley what there is in it. Uh, obviously, not actually a great deal. Hmm, okay. So that's that one. And what was the other one? Was that a time machine version as well? Or was it a standard DeLorean? <laughs> if there is such a beastie, it's a standard DeLorean. Okay, uh, can we preview this car, please? Oh, you can't see it. I think there's, there's engine in there. I think what we'll do, I think we'll take this one into our garage and we will attempt to rebuild it. Actually, what we'll do first off, let's send it in for a quick wash. Get all this grime off so I can see what it looks like. That's the washer. Oh, it looks quite smart, actually, doesn't it? I like that bright silver and the interior detailing. Yeah, we'll do that as well. That's nice. Now, have I made a profit already? Have I made a profit if I click on there and go there? Uh, yeah, the body is 64% and the interior is 67 Actually, everything's in good order, basically, apart from the bits that make it work. Oh, I'm, no, I've not made money yet. Okay, so let's get it into the garage and let's see what happens when we take it apart. Right, so everything is out. I'm just checking on the engine options we have for this particular car, the DMC, DeLorean DMC 12. We currently have a V6 double overhead cam. Is that what that means? Am I starting to understand some of these things about engines? Ooh, let's hope not. <laughs> so it's got a V6 in there at the moment and we could have either the... Ooh, the NSN would be an option. Or we've got uh, the V8 AXK or the V8 Supercharged. 
Would the V8s be a better, more powerful engine? I think they might be. Uh, I don't know. We shall have to find that out. Anyway, what I'm going to do, I'm going to run through to the engine stand here. We're going to take the engine apart. We're going to install that on the stand. Yeah, that looks fine to me. And we'll take this apart and then we'll put it together or maybe an entirely new engine for the car. Right, see you on the other side of this. That's all uh, done and dusted. We've taken that V6 engine apart and uh, that was quite a fun exercise actually. There's, there's a, It's not a terribly intricate engine as such. We don't have all those valve rods and rockers and stuff to deal with which are just a pain. Um, but yeah, it was a slightly interesting and different design to the ones I've seen so far in the game. But that's all taken apart now. So what I want to do is if we take you off the stand, if I click on the stand somewhere, no, not on the engine, I need to click on the stand so I can take you off. There you are, the engine stand, and we'll take you away from there. So let's have a look in the warehouse and see what we can do when it comes to engines. Yeah, we, we talked about in the last episode about the number of different warehouse stores you can have. I've got a little bit more carried away. So I've now got body parts generally, as well as specialist body parts stores for the Volvos and the DMCs, the DeLoreans. Uh, the rims and tyres, I think I've added tyres in because for some reason I found, or I've somewhere acquired a couple of 100% tyres. You can't fix them, so there's no point keeping them unless they're good quality and nobody seems to actually I don't saying that would anybody want a below perfect tire they might do actually now bear that in mind anyway yes yeah, so i've also added a store of engine blocks so i can see what we've got in here because i've collected quite a few from the junkyards basically <laughs> so uh can we sort these by name so what i'm looking for i think is uh is it the v6 and the V8. So yeah, you are. Ah, uh, yeah, for the AK. Uh, no, it's the AKX that we were looking for, wasn't it? Uh, I still get confused because the difference between the engine and the block. So you need, oh dear, SHOC. Would it be oh a V8 for the DA DOHC? Oh, that's a very good question. Because I'm assuming it won't be one of these V8 SOHC. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm lost. Okay, we've got this one. Let's try that, shall we? See if that works. Or do we have gone F? Mm, good question. I wish I understood engines. Or well, take the, the standard V8 as well just in case so that one does look a bit different it's got that twiddly bit on the side hasn't it okay we'll put those in my inventory so if i go to the stand now that's it until i want to create a new engine and it's going to be one of these v8 all the supercharged or the other one i can put in here is an akx which is that one oh it, ah right okay so Oh yeah, that, that's much more powerful, isn't it? How does that compare to the V6 uh, CHG that we had in there to start with? Oh, that's a poultry engine, isn't it, compared? Definitely. Right, should we try and get carried away? We'll try and stick a supercharged V8 in there. I think this is possible, so we'll do you. Okay, and then remembering how I discovered with the help of uh, one of my commenters to do this. I want to install. I don't have the necessary parts. Ah, no, you click on the engine. That's right. Then you mount the V8. Ah, so it's a standard V8 that goes on there for this, is it? Super. Right, uh, so what I will do now is I will find lots of appropriate performance parts. So we're going to really soup this one up, I think. So we're going to want a power steering pump. Have I got one of those already? Not that's not a performance part. Alter alt oh, we've got the alternator already. I'll slip you on there. Uh, the fuel filter. Yes, we've got you already. 
What about around the back here? Uh, the crankshaft. I don't think they're performance parts, are they, the crankshaft? But I'll stick you in there for the moment. And the flywheels. No, you are definitely a performance part, so I can get you. And the pistons likewise. No, I've used up all my performance pistons so far. Uh, how many of these do I need now? I think there's six in the last NG, which probably is what the V6 stood for. Six valves. Oh, I, I, I best stop now. If I start understanding engines, uh, the, the people will start taking me seriously. and We can't be having that. So we'll take you. Uh, have I got a V8 oil filter? I have. don't think they come in performance parts, do they? Uh, so, Okay, so I will continue buying stuff and putting this engine back together again. And then we'll uh, we'll look at it and see if we can actually fit it in the in the car, which I think I should be able to do if I've done my job right. I'll see you again on the other side of this uh, of this rebuild. think that is the engine more or less complete and my oh no there's some fuel rails actually there, there's where's the ignition thing shouldn't there be an ignition something or other in here as well oh uh, okay so fuel rails oh we have got performance parts of these excellent yeah pretty much everything is performance that I could make it as far as I can remember so we should get quite the boost to the standard V8 supercharged engine here. But what I want to do is paint, of course, the engine covers. They do need to be proper Ajax Post orange. Actually, I'm just wondering, I think, can the fuel rails be painted as well? We'll take those out for the moment, just in case because they're a bit red, and red and orange aren't the best sort of combination of colours. The fuel filter? No, we'll leave that as is, I think. Okay, now the one thing, one of the things they have improved a lot, apparently, with this new update, whoops, don't run into the cupboards, is the, uh, is the paint shop. They've added all sorts of extra options to it, and improved the, the colours, and it's, it's supposed to be better anyway, I think. But then, what do I know? <laughs> Ow! I really should stop smacking myself in the face when I open these doors. Right, what have we got here? I dare say they've not improved the search on the inventory. No, they haven't. Thank you, guys. For nothing. Uh, right, so we want these V8 engine head covers. I think I've got two of them. Yes, I have. Yes, A and B. I want to make sure they're the same shade of orange. 
Yeah, so that, that does look well, that does look very nice. Oh, we've got gloss now. I don't remember that before. Solid. Ah, metallic. Pearl. Matte. And chrome. Oh, chrome, 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 chrome looks quite nice, actually. Or chameleon. There's too, there's too much. Matt, oh my god, they have, they have put a lot of new options in here just to confuse the hell out of simple people like me. I, yeah, I think chrome, ideally, because there's a lot of chrome in the engine. That, that's the whole point of performance parts, isn't it? It's the chrominess of it. Okay, uh, I can. How can I, can I change this more? The thing is, I think. Although it remembers the last colour you used here from this, and whether it was pearl or, hang on, or chrome or whatever, it doesn't remember necessarily all the other options from here. So I think, I will leave that as is, I think. Uh, what's this? This is the, all the hue and the saturation. Uh, they, they have improved this, I think, so not all these numbers or something were saved. So, yeah. If, if you're familiar with the paint shop, then, then take a, another look at it uh, since this new release. It, uh, it has been... Why has it gone back to matte? Perhaps because I... Mm, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> right, let's paint you. That's you done. And now I've got to find the other one. If I can remember which one it was. Uh, I think... Uh, I don't know. <laughs> right, uh, there. You see, it hasn't remembered that either. Now, oh, that, that, that is rubbish, isn't it? If you're going to remember presets... No, sorry, that, that's rubbish. They, they need to improve this a lot. More, a lot more. Right, Chrome, I think that's the same. Okay, now what I did pick up was those fuel rails. Can we paint those as well? Are they in here anywhere? Oh, they are! Nice, okay. Can I paint you a nice chromy orange? Would fuel rails be chromy? Who knows? Alright. This is a hundred credits just for a little bit of paintwork on a fuel rail. It does seem a little bit excessive. It's, this whole inventory system in these sort of subtasks really could be much better and easier on the user. What you need, my friends, at Red Dot is a proper UX expert, a user experience expert. I know they're not cheap, but they can make a huge difference to what your users experience and how they relate to the game or any software product for that matter so yeah i mean i'm not one um, and i've only vaguely come across well, where the heck are we <laughs> I've only vaguely come across them in my old life in the old software business but uh, yeah they are i think i'm probably taking the long way around here aren't i yeah <laughs> oh well could all, all do with a walk it's good exercise it's good for you Right, let's put these bits back on the engine. Do you think I should do the rims in orange as well? For this. Like I did for my first renovation. Uh, possibly not. <laughs> possibly not. Oh, we're missing something. What's this? The throttle. Oh, we've got a... There's going to be so much poke in this particular engine. It is going to be awesome. And I think that is the job done. That does look good, doesn't it? So let's get this engine out of here and see if I can put it into the car. Oh, I can! I can! Look at this. Is everything there that it needs to be? Yep, everything is looking fabulous. And there it is. Let's take the stand away. Go away. Don't need you any anymore. You did a very good job while you were here. 
And there it is, in situ. Okay, I need to obviously put the rest of the car back, so I'm going to spend some time at the repair bench and uh, see what I can recover from this and any other vehicles, see what might fit in here, and I'll rejoin you once we've got the car more or less back together again. See you shortly. Okay, well I think we now have everything back in the car, all the mechanics, the engine, the suspension, the braking system, all apart from the tyres. And the rims, obviously. The, well, you need the rims, really, for the tyres, don't you, I suppose? Yeah, so everything's in there. Though I did notice one thing when I was putting it together. Um, I did this sort of check. Just, just check that everything was in there okay. And it was fine. So I went through this, and I thought, yeah, that's all good. Okay, the bodywork. I haven't taken the bodywork off as yet. Uh, what we've got is in reasonable condition. But there's a fair amount missing, obviously. Actually, not that much, um, including the tyres. But I noticed that when I had the engine on the stand and I was getting so carried away taking all those lovely photographs of it, I'd forgotten the coil covers and the ignition head things, the ignition coils that you see there. I had a feeling when I was putting it together, we put the spark plugs in, we put the, the engine head, whatever it's called, on. And uh, I thought, oh, that's, I'm sure there's some... Where's the ignition coming from? And I obviously... Because uh, there's an issue... Sometimes I have an issue with the light on the engine stand. It's too reflective and shiny. And my eyesight obviously isn't up to it. So I missed out the ignition coils and the, uh, the coil covers. But we put them back on and I've made sure they're painted in a suitably glossy orange colour. But obviously the material, I keep trying to use the mouse to rotate, and you don't in this game, do you? <laughs> it's, uh, I've tried to match the colour, and although they are the same colour and the same gloss finish, because they're different materials, I think, they're obviously uh, showing up differently. As far as I can tell, then, the engine is now complete, which is all good. Now, I've just noticed something. Uh, if I go here... Uh, we want... Where's the exhaust? Uh, th this will be at the back, won't it? How much of the exhaust is there, actually? There isn't much. Ah. Now, I've just been um, watching the, the latest episode from of Car Mechanic Simulator from my uh, creator buddy, Just Roscoe, who's done a, a fabulous series of, of renovations and rebuilds of junkyard finds and so on. Some quite spectacular cars, it has to be said. <laughs> Um, and he pointed out in, in his rebuild he was using performance exhaust. And I'm not sure if I noticed if mine are performance or not. It's not saying that there, is it? So perhaps I should check that out. Okay, let's get the car back up on the on the high lift. Uh, and let me just check that out. Because everything else is performed and tuned as, uh, as much as it can be. Oh, no, they are performance ones. Oh, I had done that. Oh, excellent. Right. So I'm not as much of a dunce as I thought I was. But where does it go? I mean, they are beautiful and shiny, aren't they? Shouldn't there be another part of the exhaust? No, possibly not, because it all comes out of the engine, doesn't it? So, no, that's fair enough. Okay, we're done. We're done then, really. Yes. So there's me panicking over nothing. Or for no reason, more accurately. Okay, we're, I'm going to leave the tyres till the end, but what I want to do next is get the bodywork off, because this is where it starts getting interesting and expensive, I think. Uh, so we'll get you up. What's that? That's a, this interior has come up really nicely after that interior detailing wash we did. Uh, and the right, what was the right fender? Good. And the rear bumper. Super. That engine looks so good out there, doesn't it? I mean, obviously, that Ajax Post Orange colouring really works for it. Actually, I quite like the black. <laughs> the black looks kind of cool. I do quite like that. Right, that's that job done. So let's have a look at the body. So what we'll do first is go into my body shop, see what we've got for my DMCs. Uh, so we want to be in here. I want to go to, yeah, the rims and tyres. Yeah, yeah. Talk about that later. <laughs> My DMC store. Let me get it all out, shall I? And let's have a look at our inventory. Uh, not for rims. 
Um, what have we got here? We've got all sorts, ooh, all sorts of body. Uh, got some reasonably good headlights. Actually, can we repair? I've noticed we can repair a number of modded tail lights, um, which you, you can't more you can't repair sort of in game uh, base base game uh, lights at all but some of the modded ones you can so body repair table ah ah so it's here right we can repair these tail lights hopefully yes and you yes can we do the headlight oh cool it's a pity you can't do it for the in game the base game vehicles work it might work yeah let's go carbon fiber that's what we're going to do i've decided now i need to get around here get all this stuff off repair it so it actually looks good and we're away right bear with me a second i'm going to do a little bit of body repairing on the car that is even though my no, don't say anything else you'll embarrass yourself man <laughs> i'll repair this uh, get the extra parts and we'll put the thing back together again and see how we go from there. I'll be back with you in a second. Well, I think we've got all the body parts on. This is the uh, Ready Player One bumper, which looks kind of sexy. It looks a bit kit, doesn't it? Really? Yeah. Um, I'm just wondering what the paint will look like on this carbon fibre body. We shall find that out in due course. Uh, there is one... Uh, one more part of the body I think which we need to put on which is the rear clamshell but if it's anything like the Volvo clamshell the sunroof basically uh, you can't do that until you get the car off the lifter so it's on its own standing on its own wheels but first off we need to get our wheels sorted out so let's have a walk across to the rim room if you will in the warehouse here and I've had a look at this I need to go to my warehouse to the rims and tires store now as we've discussed before i've picked up lots and lots of rims from the barns and all the junkyards i've been to uh, so I, you can repair them and make money from them and of course because all the rims and the tires come in different sizes you've got to do a lot of searching to get any that match in any way shape or form so uh, this is quite a mish mishmash of, of rim types here but I've identified three here three rim types of which I've got at least two of the same size <laughs> which we can use which are the rim 33 are these in the right order they are now so we've got rim 33 here so I've got two 14 inch ones of those we've also got uh, there was an avalanche one where's that well that probably comes at the end doesn't it Oh no, it will come up fairly soon. These these here, the Avalanche, they're the 15 inch ones. The, the question then of course is, will they fit on a car which isn't the Avalanche? Don't know, could try that. Uh, well, other than that, we've got the modern, uh, a modern six, was it a modern six? Actually, we've got one of 15, at, oh, it's a very high quality one as well. Ooh, we could do a quality upgrade. So I've got the parts to do, to do that, I reckon. On the assumption I can repair these rims up to quality, <laughs> that is. So we got those, uh, the rim modern six. That, that's quite a nice looking rim. And finally, the retro number seven. Retro seven Bs, yeah, which is these here. Actually, I, I quite like the black. It goes with the carbon fiber styling we've got, isn't it? So let's try, see if I can repair these two. We need to buy tyres now, don't we? Now, this is something that, um, again, I've been watching just Roscoe's rebuild, and he's had a lot of problems when he's been tuning his cars with keeping them going straight on the speed test track. So I've done a bit of research, and apparently, if you've got a really high-performance car, the best tyre for it, to keep it sticking to the road and not just veering off in all directions, is the slick which is supposed to stick to the track yeah um, but they're, they're not very good at acceleration from what I understand uh, after that if you're not slick go race and then go sport if I remember that correctly so 
the Shelby's and slicks are expensive, aren't they? And I've got 21 grand left. Can I afford this? Or do I want to try race tyres? We'll try race tyres. Okay, we'll see how well the car does. Uh, do we want... I like the, right, the, the white writing on the tyre beat, so we'll try that one. Okay, so this is going to be size... We want one just for the moment. I want to just check this works under the car. <laughs> so we will want this to be 15. So this is going to be at... This is going to be at the back or the front. This is the back, isn't it? And then at the back... 235. How big can we make this? We can make it really wide. Okay, we'll stick with 235. Can I make it wider? I want to make it wider. 245. Okay. We'll see if that fits under the car, basically. That's what I'm trying to do here. So we've got one of those. First check. Will it actually fit on the rim? Uh, rim 7, 15 inch. Oh, it does. It likes it. Can we put it underneath our car and will it look ridiculous? Look at that lovely orange. Ajax Post orange calipers. Nice. It's going to accept it. It fits. It does fit. It looks like it fits quite well as well, actually, doesn't it? But then I have actually got the wide body components on here, which I didn't, don't think I said when we were, when we were looking at uh, the body panels. Yeah, we're going to do that. Okay, that is splendid. That's the job done. All the tyres are on. And they look like they fit quite nicely. Could possibly have got even wider, which I think would help keep the vehicle on the track when you're going at speed. Around the other side, and can we get in? This looks lovely already, doesn't it? Can I turn it on? <laughs> oh, that sounds quite good. Okay. Right. Uh, let's close that. Close the door. Thank you. Let's take you into tuning, shall we? Now, because this is a car I own, we can do something else, not just check the performance of the engine. We can also tune it on here. And I have no idea what this means or what this does. So, oh, this says I can go... To, ah, okay, so... Right, can I change these then? What's the final ratio? 370? Oh, if I bring that down, I can get a faster speed. Can I get to 300? Okay. And first, I don't, I don't know what this means. <laughs> what effect this has? That's, yeah. If, again, if if you know what would be a good selection here, uh, without being too technical for for, for the average numpty you know, would, would be, would be fine. Uh, so, ooh. Okay. So you're changing the speed, maximum speed in that gear, I suppose. But I don't know how, yeah, whatever. We'll leave that like that. And come out. I think that's all we need to do. And let's see that if the performance stacks up. Oh my god, that did sound like a rocket taking off, didn't it? <laughs> and an 87, an over 87 and 83% improvement over the factory power. I think the factory power must be referring to the old V6 engine. Okay, is it going to be possible 
to control this car on the test on the speed track. We'll come back to painting in a minute, but I just want to test it out on the speed track and see what it gets up to. Uh, you don't do that from here. You do this from the map. Going to the speed track. Yes, please. And we're going to take our fabulous new DeLorean. Okay, this is going to be a test. Can we get this to go in a straight line at a considerable speed? Oh, it takes off. We're doing well. Over 100. 130. 200. 250. 280. 290. 301 km per hour. I'm kind of happy with that. <laughs> That's it. And it went straight. So I think, again, it, I, it's, the, the tyres are obviously playing into the stability of the car. So having fairly wide tyres and I think the appropriate type, race or slick or whichever, does give you that stability. That's impressive. I like that. Whoa, okay. Let's paint it. Do we have any liveries for it? Uh, apparently not. Okay. Hmm. That grey didn't show up quite so grey in the in the workshop, did it? Okay. So can we make? What colours can we use? Can we go? I've used black before, and oh, the carbon fibre still looks like carbon fibre. Ah, you cannot paint carbon fibre. So we're just getting the accents then on the bumpers, basically. Okay, that's that's fine, I think. A silver accent. Because that then ties in to the tyre, the rims as well, black and silver. It's almost as if I planned it to look like this. So let's uh, have a final check of all our stats. Well, the most of the ones we can check anyway. And see what we're looking at here. Uh, so it's a standard DeLorean. Yeah, not really. <laughs> yeah, it, those are the, this is all the factory stuff. And we've changed it a lot from the car we found hidden away in a barn. And the engine performance is so much better than it should than it was in a bog standard DeLorean. That is impressive. Everything is 100% as we've seen. And finally, for the money men among us, this is what we're going to make from it. We bought it for 37. We're selling it for 126. That's nearly 90 grand profit. Minus all the expenses of repairing and buying new bits. I'm gonna make some money from this one. So DeLorean DMC 12 supercharged, farewell. And it's done. And that brings this episode to a close. So, only one question to ask then next is, Christine, or this uh, Typhoon Racer? I fancy doing Christine next, if you'll pardon the expression. What do you think? If you'd like to see more, uh, then do let me know in the comments below, particularly which of these vehicles I should uh, fix up next. Or of course the Volvo, which is waiting for us here are uh, not quite on the lifter i don't know it's up to you let me know what you want to see in the next one uh, but for the meantime thank you so much for joining me today for this episode of car mechanic simulator 2021 if you've enjoyed this it'll be great to hear from you a little bit of a like would be lovely you know just click on the old thumbs up button even better though if you've got any thoughts any hints tips recommendations or even criticisms of what i'm doing with it then please do drop a note into the comments box below that would be awesome and of course, if you've not already subscribed to the channel, you could do so now. And that way you'll know when I update, when I upload even, another one of these. Or any of my other Let's Play series. Can I not sit in it? Let me sit in it. Oh, how annoying is that? I want to sit. <laughs> oh, darn. Anyway, so from me, Ajax Post, here in Car Mechanic Simulator 2021, until the next time, bye-bye for now.